Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday after Pentecost using lectionary cycle year B. A reminder that our bulletins were sent virtually to us, so you can use your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, or whatever technological device on mute or the volume down, so you can upload your bulletin and follow along and participate accordingly. Mass this morning begins on page 101 in your Red Books of Common Prayer. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such the Father seeks to worship Him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Together we pray the calling for purity. Almighty God, to you all ask for help of them. A reading from the Word of God written in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 through 10. 
Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall be no harm with you, neither shall there be any of them yet forever. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble, I will rescue him and bring him to honor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 35th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward and asked him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, 
Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great must become your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Words this morning from the gospel we have just heard. The 36th verse of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. He said, What do you wish me to do for you? What do you wish me to do for you? This morning we have probably a familiar story. Some may have heard, some may not have heard. And this may not be a passion narrative, but it's certainly a part of the passion narrative as Jesus is preparing for his death. And James and John are out of the twelve. They are two out of the three most familiar, most beloved, most taken places disciples. So yes, Jesus had 12 disciples, but there were three of them that he always took certain places. Not because they were more special than the others, but probably because maybe those three understood a little more. Maybe they were the mature ones in the group. Because the three names that you can recall in some of the most historical events in Jesus' life are Peter, James, and John. They were present with Jesus at his transfiguration, where Peter said, Listen, Lord, it's good to be here. Let's build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But James and John didn't speak. Now today... Peter ain't talking, the two fellas talking. They are the sons of Zebedee. Zebedee was married to a woman named Siloam or Silome, S-A-L-O-M-E. Silome or Siloam, whichever one you choose, is the sister of Mary, Jesus' mother. So James and John, would be his first cousins. All right, see, that's the sermon right there. You gotta understand it. They would be his first cousins, so they feel entitled to ask Jesus, 
Hey, we is relatives. Now you think now, now wait now, you laughing, but I, I preach in sense this morning. Think about when you know somebody who got power. All right, see, so think about when you know somebody who have power or prestige or they are somewhere in the halls of parliament, halls of the senate, maybe the general manager of BPL or BTC or maybe you know the family island priest and feel that, you know, I know you so I could come and ask you anything, I could say anything to you because Grammy says familiarity breeds contempt and I'll show you where in the scriptures this morning that's true so these two fellows who have journeyed with Jesus they've been in special places with Jesus they have had special disclosure about certain things about what's going to happen to Jesus but they come to him yes as his disciples yes as his first cousins and they say listen uh, we have a question and Jesus looks at them and say what you know if Jesus was Bahamian Jesus would have turned around and said what y'all want now that's how we talk that's our vernacular what y'all want Jesus turns to them and says what can I do for you now and I can imagine the smirk on his face because he already knows and they say okay listen um, you know we used to play as little boys and stuff like that you know use our cousin our master our rabbi and our cousin we need a favor when you get to your kingdom we need you to put one of us on the right and one of us on the left work it out you all know how it is don't look at me too strange because uh, well, I, you know you know this devil watching know how it is too hey you, you get your little office now you get your little car now you get your government i need you to do me a favor Work it out. We all have done it before. Just like how we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I know people in the bank. And when I go in the bank, I look behind. You see me? I see you. Um, and, and they said, Father, stand over there. I stand over there for like 10 minutes. You know, nobody there. But they got to play it off. So, you know, just let Father. And, and it happens. Everybody does. Nobody point finger because we all guilty of it. One way or another. So the disciples, we in good company because they do the same thing. But they give us a challenge this morning that I want us to think about as Christians. Here's the question. What are you in this for? What are you in this for? You would have thought that these two disciples, when Jesus asked them, what could I do for you? might have asked, tell us the mysteries of the universe. Tell us how to solve all our problems. Tell us how to feed our daddy, Zebedee, who was in the boat mending his net when they left Jesus. Now I have an idea of how they could just leave their daddy working because there's family. So when your family pass and your, your, your uncle or your uncle-in-law know you, I say, oh, you can go with Jesus. We know he up to good. You know them set of cousins who you got your movie say no that one ain't up to no good stay away from that one i'm sure zebedee said all right y'all go ahead i'll see y'all later not thinking that they were on a life journey they didn't ask those questions these men asked the lord whom they were following whom they were learning more about and they obviously knew who jesus was because they would have seen miracles they would have seen him do some extraordinary things, preach some dynamic and life-changing sermons. They would have heard and seen these things. They would have seen him glorified on the mount when Elijah and Moses appeared. They would have seen and heard some special things and still they asked a stupid question. Because what they were concerned about was power and prestige. And guess what? They were so selfish that they didn't even care about the twelve. You want to know how I know that's true? Because the next line after they ask the question and Jesus tells them, yes, you will drink of this cup, you will be baptized like I am baptized. It says, and the ten were angry. You know why? Not because they asked Jesus the question, you know. But they asked him first. 
Everybody wants to sit at the right hand. Even, even some of y'all thinking, when I get to heaven, I'm going to get a crown. Bigger than horn. You, you, see, you see how we talk? Bigger than horn. Can't be bigger. I can be toting mine in a truck. Because it's too heavy to put on my head. You know, that, that's how we talk. Because we, we all want to be, especially when it comes to Jesus, his favorites. But then that asks us the question this morning, why are you in this? Obviously, these two disciples somehow lost their way and did not challenge themselves by asking them the question, why are you in this? Why are we Christian? Are we only Christian because we want to go to heaven? That's it? No, that can't be right. You only love God because of what God does for you? That's why you're in this? Lord, give me. I come to church. I give my offering. I in it to get something back. Is that, is that why we are in this? Are y'all on the altar service so you could be pretty and model up around the altar? So you could be seen by people? Is that why we are in this? And this story this morning begs the question for us to do some introspection and ask ourselves, why are we Christians? Let me just tell you all one fact. I come to church and I do what I do not because I'm a priest. I ain't in this first of all for the money because there ain't no money. You don't believe me? Look around. And you'll see because if there was money, the church would be full or we need two offering pounds. We got a half a basket. So what are we in this for? And the reality is, I don't worship God so I could get to heaven and get golden shoes and white robe and a crown. I worship him because the scriptures say he loved me first. So it's natural for some people. When people love you, you love them back. I love because he first loved me. That's why we are in this Christian journey together. But we are duped sometimes thinking that, oh, I come to church and I worship on Sunday and wicked during the week and then expect to get a crown of righteousness, to get golden shoes and long robe and walk on pearly streets and have pearly gates. Is that all what heaven is to you? Is that why we are really in this? Are we in this because when we come to church, rather than asking God for the very things we need like strength, and health and energy to face another day and grace and mercy and compassion and love. We in this to see what Deborah wear this morning. And who was falling asleep when father preaching? And why Mr. Adley them sit on that side rather than the next side? And why the servers don't do Is that why you are in this? And the disciples this morning Teach us that there are many of us Christians who are sidetracked with things that are unnecessary. For example, and I can only speak of what I know in our church, we suffer from people who think that a seat means something. Sorry to tell you, and I'm saying it live because it has to be said. Same thing the fellas are arguing about, Lord, where are we going to sit? You worried about seat? In heaven, aren't you just glad you made it? In church, you worry about seat. Listen, if you ever walk in here in church park and you ever tell somebody, and um, that's my seat, you better hope I don't see. And I mean that. I'm not even joking. Why? Because the first thing that anybody who goes here and walk in here on a Sunday and see this place packed to the rim should think, look at God. Look at God. Where all these people come from? You should get books and get bulletins and walk up and good morning. How are you? Welcome people. But you worried about your seat. And just like the Pharisees, we look at the mess and miss the message. What are we really in this for? And that's our challenge. I really want to challenge you this week to think about that one question. You know, I have people who tell me, Father, I was a server. I used to serve. I used to go to church all the time. And then I say, but how you, 
How you end up in the bar? You don't serve no more. How, how you gonna be a server for all these years and now you don't even go to church? You know what that tells me? You wasn't a server for serving the Lord. You was a server because your mommy think you look cute in these red robe and these white thing or take picture and oh he's so cute. Oh he looks so holy. Because I own this thing. Yeah, it's hard to behave when you're on bird. No, because no, because you you know people and I know people who do that. And so obviously when they become servers, it has no impact on their life. It's not life transforming. It doesn't do anything for their soul. All it does is dress them up on a Sunday and I don't walk around and prance around like ponies around the altar. Because if this is transforming and if they are in this for the right reason, 20 years from now, Simone or Vincent or even Eddie don't have to worry where their children are because something was instilled in them because when they were serving, they were in it for the right reason. They were in it because they wanted their lives to be different. They were in it because they were around holy people, touching holy things and reading from holy books and being around a holy priest. So they decided that I want to be holy too. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's why we in it. I, 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 I spend, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I spend time with them because I want them to know it changed my life. I am not ashamed. I was an altar boy when I was three. Underneath Father Bowlegs, I used to hold up the aisle when he walking away on the recessional him. Hey, that's me. Some started late. But my thing is, if you get into this journey, it's not about Father who is the best, Father who is the special one, Father who is the favorite one. It is not mine to grant. So why all can't be the best? You ever think Christians don't think like that? Why can't we all be the best at serving Christ? Why can't we all be the best at reading the lessons? Don't get mad at Deborah every time she's picked to read the lesson. She's in it for the right reason. She reads so that people's lives can be edified by the word. We pick you because when you read, you got to read so often. We're here to hear what God has to say to us. We need you to be bold. We need you to be courageous. And we need you to read that word because... Some of us was waiting all week for a word. Why are we in this? The disciples this morning challenge us, my friends, to think, what are you really in this for? Catechist, why are you really a catechist? Honest to goodness. Vincent, why are you a lay minister? To be, why am I a priest? Just put these on and what does Jesus say? Only the Gentiles, when they get a couple little bit of power, Lord it over people. You know, I, I, I have tried my very best to send a clear message to those politicians, especially the two who represent our island, because again, we have two here. We have an MP and a senator on this island, point blank. The two are to work for the people. You have an issue with that, then you don't know what you're talking about. The two ought to help us. The two ought to see our island grow and mature and be better. But they have to be in it for the right reasons. You can't expect a man to help you when he only came in it to be recognized as the honorable senator or the honorable MP. What are we in these things for? Are we really in them to help each other? Do we come to worship, really, to worship? What are we in these positions for? So people can see us in these scarves and stoles and this my seat. You know, if Maurice came today and church was full and he said, well, Father, you know where to sit? I sit him up here. Why not? Guess what? Because sitting, sitting him up here once could change his life. Because he could say, why well, feel different? And during the service, he may say, I can see myself up here doing what Catechus Bo do. What's wrong with that? But then we have leaders, this my seat. This my, you, you know, even though I was installed in that chair, that in my chair. Because I got to leave one day and somebody else can sit in it. The only chair in here nobody could sit in is the bishop own. And I am sure the kind of bishop we have would say, hey, if church full and you really need the chair, 
sitting in. And sometimes you must ask yourselves, because I know while preparing this, I had to challenge myself. Why are you a priest? What are you in this for? And I thought, but Lord, it ain't the money. You know, I ain't ashamed to say I sell a cup and buy it now. So that's the help, you know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can laugh sometimes. Really, little, little joke. Make you laugh. Um, you know, I, I certainly ain't in it for the prestige. I remember, uh, well, not remember, it wasn't that long. Um, Father Phil, the priest in the north, we decided we we're going to do lunch once a month. And he came, you know, first time, and it was my time the first time because th this is my island. So <laughs> he come on our island. And, uh, Came up this way, went to the lighthouse, and he came in. Khakis, little nice little loafers, and little shirt with cross on and thing. And I came out of the house in my basketball black pants that I always wear. Superman shirt, my Nike slippers. So he said, Carrie, where you going? I said, I said you said we're going to lunch? Um, he said, you going to put on your, you know, your priest clothes all. You know, I said, priest what? Because everybody here, even if you don't like me, you all know who I am. I could wear short pants and slippers and we don't have to dress up to be priest. Now, yes, certain occasions call for the uniform. Certain places call that I present myself the right way. But I'm not in it for the collar. My ministry should dictate and illustrate that, hey, he's obviously the priest. The way he carries himself should say to you, okay, yeah, we, we know who that is. That's probably one of the fathers or whatever the case may be. And so many times we get caught up in the badge, in the uniform, in the scarf, and not realizing that we are in this to serve God and serve others. And them two disciples forgot that it's not about where I sit in heaven. Because here's what Jesus tells them, you will drink from the cup. You all know what that cup was? Suffering. You all know how I know that because there are many cups in the Bible cup of salvation. David talks about a cup that overflows with grace and mercy in the psalm. My cup runneth over. There's a cup of joy, a cup of plenteousness, and there's a cup of sorrow. There's a cup for the forgiveness of sins. Where's that in the Bible? After supper, he took a cup of wine, and what did he do with it? He gave it to them and said, drink this. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, let this cup pass from me, not my will. But thine be done. So this cup, they did partake in. But this cup, yes, and guess what? It did lead them to honor. Because we have churches named after St. John. Oh, wait, one right in Buckley's. What a, what a wonderful honor. We do have churches named after St. James, St. Peter's, St. Paul. They were not in it to have churches named after them. But they were in it because their name bears the message that the good news reached Long Island. And we put their names there because their life was a godly example for which we can follow. I ask you today as I have been challenging myself all day. What are you really in it for? But what are you a Christian for? Just so you could be recognized. I, I, you know, I asked someone the other day, if we leave the Anglican church, what could happen? And you know, the person, oh, you will be cut off from the network. You ain't gonna know all the big wigs. <laughs> no, I want you to believe that is true. And what's amazing about that is a lot of people think like that, that we are Anglicans because we have big wigs in our church. What type? Come on. That's why you come to the Anglican church, because we got big wigs, meaning you, you know people, and we have managers, and doctors, and lawyers, and politicians, and uh, whatever else, mechanics. We have a lot of networking in the Anglican church. Yes, that is true. But if that's why you are a member, you really need to do some introspection. You really must look within yourself. If you are a catechist, or a lay minister, or even an altar server, just so you could be seen and have power or prestige, take these off. Because you know what I'm learning? People who have power in church don't have none at home. Hallelujah. 
it's the truth. People who want to govern everything in church and govern people in church, watch how they react with their children. Sit down. They, they can't tell the child, sit down, child. But when they come to church, well, I'm the president. I'm the sister. I'm the catechist. I'm the lay minister. And you must listen. But their own wife don't listen to them. So what are you in this for? It amazes me that you find out that answer when you say to somebody, hey, you've served your time. Let somebody else have some time. I, but I ain't coming back. So you was only coming to church because you was the president? You were the vice president? You were the treasurer? Or he let Vincent read? He let the catechist read? So you must read all the time? That's really why you are in this? And today I want us to challenge ourselves to think it's not about the power and the prestige, even of heaven. We're just talking about earth. Because in heaven, one thing I like is your crown will look just like my crown. And you may need a truck for your crown too. You know what I like about life? No matter where we are in life, all us get in the same size hole. Somebody may already be in yours if you pay for a double plot, but you're going in the same hole. And these things, I believe, should humble us at times. You know, we lord things over people. Even as servants. Are you in this because you want to be holier, young adults? You know, I, I've heard some of you tell me, well, Father, they laugh at us sometimes, or they make fun of us sometimes, or we can't go places sometimes. Why, why you can't go? Because you are different. That's why you have a whole different uniform from me. You got a different uniform than him, and you have a different uniform than him. Because what you do is special. What you do is service to God, assistance to his ministers, and to serve the people. And that should go with you your whole life. I must say it because it's true. You two boys, your brothers are examples of what I'm preaching. It never left them because they were obviously in it for the right reason. I pray today that those watching us virtually in worship and you present would ask yourself, why am I in this? Am I just a Christian because my mother told me, go to church? And you sat there and you listened to the priest. But now that you are grown, are you in this because you want to make your salvation sure? So many of us are unsure. I live on a little island just like you where I, I meet so many people that they scare me sometimes because I can hear in their voices that they are not sure. And so we are in this to get that good news out there because no man knows the day nor the hour. Those disciples really didn't understand the suffering that was coming because every disciple Jesus had, the 12, were persecuted. They were killed. Some were martyred because of the gospel. And don't feel bad if you say, you know, sometimes I am that person that I'm not in it for the right reason. Father too. Me too. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself and forget, why am I in this? But next week you have morning prayer, so I got to say this to you. Next week, Jesus asks a man the same question. What do you want me to do for you? And you know what the man tell him? Heal me. The man wasn't a disciple. He was a regular man, a blind man. You know him as Bartimaeus. And he'll say, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus will say, oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Today, Jesus asks you and me, what can I do for you? And we say, Lord, have mercy. We ain't worried about seat. We ain't worried about prestige and the power. All we need is more grace, more mercy, more love, because we drink in from the suffering cup too. 
I know not every day for me as a Christian is easy. I know that. I show for you, it hasn't been easy. So you're drinking from that cup too. But remember we are in it for the love, for the joy, for the peace, for the grace. We in it for the mercy, but we also in it to suffer. Yeah. Because our suffering is united with his suffering. Because if he suffered and he died, we too will suffer and die. But he was raised. So too shall we be raised if we suffer with him. Why are you in this? Thanks be to God. We are invited to serve the needs of all, but we require God's assistance. Let us turn our hearts to God, asking for help in our need, saying, Lord, have mercy. The leaders of the church will freely serve the faithful without preference to rank or authority. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That among the peoples of the world, service will take precedence over authority. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the many peoples of the world will serve the needs of others and will comfort the anxieties of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the victims of oppression, abuse, or neglect will discover the peace of God through others' assistance, prayer, and presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all who suffer will know the power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the community gathered here will nourish others, sustained by the nourishment of the Word and the table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All together. Lord, Lord of justice. Lord of love. Lord, Lord of love. Send your spirit to dwell within us, sustaining our efforts and service. We ask this in Jesus' name, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we think of that challenging question this morning, why are we in this? We must acknowledge that at times we are in it for all the wrong reasons. This is 
our opportunity now to correct that by asking God to forgive us for our sin. Let us now, devoutly kneeling or sitting with our heads bowed reverently, take an opportunity to confess our sins to God. Using form A, together we pray, Almighty God, our God.
presentation of our offerings we use form A found on page 126 through your goodness Lord we have this bread and wine to offer it is the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands they will become our spiritual food all things come from you Blessed Paul, 
blessed James and John, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty.
sing the hymn at communion, 593, 593.
please be seated but for a moment. Today we wish to say a special welcome to all of you faithful few joining us in worship this morning. Also for those of you worshiping with us virtually, we want to say a big welcome and thank you for taking the time not just to join us but taking time to worship God, for it is such the Father seeks to worship Him. We hope our service today has been a blessing to you by God's Word and through His Holy Sacrament. The announcements are found in your bulletins that you would have received virtually, and also you can find them online on our Facebook page, and so we ask that you take the time to read through the announcements anything pertaining to you or the ministry that you may be involved in. This morning our Sunday school ministry went virtual for the first time and so they were on Zoom at 9 o'clock this morning and we do hope that it was successful and that people allowed their children to Zoom in because it's free and we hope that they had a good fun virtual lesson with our Sunday School Superintendent and their teachers. There will be even some tonight at 6.30 here at St. Paul. We encourage all of you that today is the Lord's Day, it's not your day. And so we ask that you end the day in song, prayer, and adoration. A simple service, a quiet service, a service of meditation and adoration. And as you think about, should I really go today? Ask yourself, why are you in this if you ain't coming to church? It kind of makes no sense being a Christian who don't like church. Christians love anything to do with Jesus. And that's why we are in this. Because we love Jesus. So please join us this evening for 6.30, if possible, for even some. There will be Mass here on Tuesday morning at 7 and Mass on Friday morning at 7 at St. Athanasius. You are encouraged to join us at all two, but choose the one that's best for you during the week as a form of encouragement, spiritual solace as you continue your journey through the week or on the weekend. Bible study is on Wednesday on Zoom by 6.30 and I must say, Bible study is growing. Uh, for the past two Wednesdays, we've had over 26 people. That's wonderful. So please keep sharing, keep inviting. We hope that Bible study continues to be thought-provoking, spiritually uplifting, and encouraging. Because the Bible is a book we need to understand properly and carefully in order to fulfill our very purpose of why God has us here, or even why are we in it? The answers are in the scriptures. So please join us for Bible study via our Zoom ID link. There is no passcode. All of you are welcome, even our young people. It's moved from two people, Ashanti and Alyssa, and now maybe the other disciples know I could Zoom in too. It's not for special children, it's for children who want to be there. So you had the two twins who were with their parents, and then you had the two girls, and now I have Desmond and Sean Dre in Bible study. So encourage the other children you know that, hey, it, it may be an hour and a half, it may be two hours, but that's because it's St. Paul. We learn together, we laugh together, we journey together, and sometimes that takes time, okay? So encourage, please, our young people to be a part of that. Next week, Sunday School is virtual, so please look out for the flyer. Our parish administrator is on vacation. Praise John. And so Tiffany gets an opportunity to rest, relax, and recuperate. She will be gone from the 19th of October, which is this Tuesday, and she returns on the 2nd of November. So let's pray that Tiffany finds rest and relaxation and revived again to go again 
when she comes back into the office. So that means if you call, please remember father teaching and got two little children with the wife to work. So if I don't make it to the phone, please leave a message after the sound of the beep and we will get back to you as soon as possible. If any one of you want to volunteer to help out at the office, the word is volunteer. <laughs> volunteer without pay. Uh, the best pay you'll get is free water, juice, and tea provided in the rectory. And if you feel like cooking, you are more than welcome. <laughs> you are more than welcome to do that. So, we want you to pray for the Anglican Diocese as we prepare for the 118th session of Holy Synod. Synod begins virtually on Tuesday the 16th through Wednesday the 17th. Please pray for the bishop. Please pray for all the House of Clergy and the House of Laity, especially our two representatives who are Deborah Major, our People's Warden, and Miss Lakiza Lloyd. Please pray that God will give them the strength and the fortitude to represent us well in our virtual synod. The fundraiser is coming up on Saturday the 27th of November and we're still looking for donations now. I'm online. Hello online people, especially those who live in the States, in England and Canada. We need some things. And we lean on your generosity for anything you can send us for our bingo table or maybe some food supplies for the cookout. Steaks, chicken, rice, potatoes, macaroni, cheese, cream, sodas. You can even send us a case of Canadian bail. We'll get rid of it. Hallelujah. So, whatever you can do to help St. Paul's make this event a success, please help us. We are not ashamed to ask for help, and we certainly would like your help, as when people do things together in unity, it gives God glory, and it makes whatever we are doing a complete success. Our church, just like most churches, are in dire need to continue to survive because COVID has not only taken an effect on our bodies, but on our economy and on our giving and on some of the sacrifices that we have. And so we kindly ask you, please help us in any way by calling 337-3002 or contacting one of your relatives or friends here in Long Island and say you are sending it on the boat or on the plane. You could even send it to Nassau and we will get it out of Nassau. So please help us in any way that you can. For those who are present, you've heard the message, help the church. Why are you in this? You are in it not for self, you're in it because you're part of a family. And this family, this morning, had the air condition on, and we gotta pay for that at the end of every month. And the light on. And the live streaming costs money because we got to pay for that little white box every month. So yes, it benefits us all. So however you can help. Well, Father, I don't have no money. Well, volunteer to clean, volunteer to cook, volunteer to grill. Well, Father, I got relatives in the States. Tell them to go to the Dollar Tree. You all know the Dollar Tree? And Walmart and Target. And tell them buy a couple things for under $5 and $5 so we can have a nice spread on the bingo table and looking for one nice TV, one nice 60 inch TV. Right, so that would be for the $10 table or the $20 table. Um, because I am scared to say, our fare brought in over $24,000 a year. Because of COVID, we can't have that. So we need to supplement something to keep what we are doing here going. So please, however you could help us don't be shy, don't think, but he have enough of that and they have enough of that. You don't know what we have enough of. Let our cup run it over. The more the merrier. Because we are not in it to say who doing and who giving. We in it because I want to do my part. Because that is my parish. And our parish is going to be the best parish in the whole wide world. Okay? One, I'm so glad you all know that slogan. I hope, I hope you remember that. Because having the best parish means we have the best people. People, but thank you for the compliment. But we got the best people. 
Because guess what? You can't be a priest without people. So we in this together, all right? All Souls Day is coming up on November 2nd. That is the day we remember all of our loved ones, our dearest and our best who have died. And so this year I am asking you to write down their names or send the names of your loved ones to me who you would like to be remembered in our prayers. We usually say, we thank God for the faithful departed or we commemorate the faithful departed and we call their names. And in the old church, you used to toll the bell. As you call each name, you ring the bell. But we ain't got no bell, so we can still call the name. Because these people lived and we want to remember them. So just write their name and if you don't want to write, send it to me via WhatsApp before the 30th of October. So we can make a list. Remember, I don't have no secretary, so I need time. So send them to me so at Mass on the 2nd, we can remember our faithful departed. And then finally, today we have a few people celebrating their birthdays. All of these people is church names, what I know. So I hope all of these people, Leo and Larry, go on to church. Gloria Turnquist, I hope you're in church. Well, Lakeza Lloyd can't go to church till next week Sunday, so don't come on the house. Uh, Leslie Darvel and Carolyn M. Boros. Well, Carolyn, you always in church, so I know that. Happy birthday to all these people. We love you, we do. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Today we want to continue to pray for all of those people who have been affected by COVID. We continue to lift up before God all of the people known to us and especially those who have been added to the list this week. We pray that God's healing power and presence will be with them right where they are. This morning we say a special prayer for Diane Knowles. We pray that God would assign an angel to her to give her peace and give her comfort. To take away the fear so that she can live abundantly. This is our prayer for Diane in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. 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 I think that's all of our announcements for today. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And if it's hot today, well, it's it, it always hot. You, I think, you know, we talk about cup. You hear the word cup in the gospel today? All right. So today can be hot. So you know what to do. Hallelujah. You need something cold and frozen to sit under the tree, turn upside down and eat and chew and suck all day. We call that a cup. All right. So. Anyhow, Grammy say you whistle, I'll point. Uh, so I hope you have a good day. See you at even some. God bless you. Please stand now for this missile. Brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. Our recessional hymn, 525, 525. If we could sing this one with a little pep in our step, I'll be grateful. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, take me from all
God's breath. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Y'all have a good day today.